Welcome to the bottom of the rabbit hole. Salute to all the Matrix University subscribers tuning in. You are appreciated. In this video, we are going to cover the very rare and very official Matrix Universe timeline poster leading up to the Enter the Matrix video game. And if this is your first time down here or you simply want to know everything about the Matrix media, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you do not miss out on any future yellow pilled content. A little known fact within the Matrix fan community is that inside the Enter the Matrix strategy guide, there is a Matrix Universe poster that outlines the events leading up to the start of the game. It mostly focuses on a few of the Animatrix episodes, but also mentions scenes from the original film. For this video, I'm going to present each block of information to you from that poster. It starts with a quote from the Zion Archive instructor in the Second Renaissance. In the beginning there was man, and for a time it was good. But humanity's so-called simple society soon fall victim to vanity and corruption. Then man makes the machine in his own likeness. Thus does man become the architect of his own demise. The second box on the timeline is the B166ER trial. B166ER, an artificially intelligent machine, is the first of his kind to rise up against his masters. At his murder trial, the prosecution argues for an owner's right to destroy property. B166ER testifies that he simply does not want to die. The leaders of men are quick to order the extermination of B166ER and every one of his kind throughout each province of the earth. Artificial intelligence is defined as the capability of a machine to imitate intelligent behavior. Suitably programmed computing machinery is capable of duplicating human cognitive mental states. Artistic note. In Second Renaissance Part 1, lights at the crosswalks are red and blue instead of red and green which is another example of the attention to detail put into the production of these films. The next box is titled Riots and Revolution. The trial of V166ER proves to be the catalyst that sparks global debate over machine rights, and the state's mandate for termination ignites violence. Riots rage through major megalopuses around the world. Property damage is estimated in the trillions. Zero one. Banished from humanity, the machines seek refuge in their own promised land. They settle in the cradle of human civilization and a new nation is born a place the machines can call home, a place they can raise their descendants, and they christen the nation 01. 01. In binary, this is loosely interpreted as no and yes. Even today, everything that we do on a computer, over the internet, etc., can be translated into zeros and ones. The machines seem to have taken the very essence of their being and named their nation after it. The machine's artificial intelligence could be seen in every facet of man's society, including the creation of new and better AI. Economic failure. Zero One prospers. But the leaders of men, their power waning, refuse to cooperate with the fledging nation, wishing rather that the world be divided. Zero One's ambassadors plead to be heard at the United Nations. They present plans for a stable civil relationship with the nations of man. Zero One's admission to the UN is denied. Preemptive strike. The United Nations launch a combined nuclear strike against Zero One. The prolonged barrage engulfs the machine's nation with the glow of a thousand suns. Unlike humans, who can withstand only 600 rads of radiation, sophisticated machines can endure a staggering thousand rads. In addition, steel melts between 2,500 and 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. Quick footnote, for anyone who doesn't know, a rad is a single unit of absorbed radiation. Retaliation. Backed by a powerful manufacturing economy, the machines counterattack. Zero One advances outwards in every direction. It is a terrible slaughter, with the machine hordes outnumbering the allied forces 10 for every one. And one after another, mankind surrenders its territories. Operation Dark Storm. Mankind's leaders conceive of their most desperate strategy, the destruction of the sky. Thus would man try to cut the machines off from the sun, their main energy source. Although the machines lost their source of solar power, so did every other living thing on the planet, plants, animals, and humans. Necessity is the mother of invention. It seems that the human's decision to black out the sky was the catalyst that forced the machines to begin searching for substitute forms of energy. Victory. The machines, having long studied man's protein-based bodies, dispense misery upon the once great human race, overcoming all human opposition to declare victory. The first prototype of the original armored personal unit, APU, was created and used in this war. I also mentioned the APU's origin in the Real World Machines of the Matrix Trilogy Explained video here on this channel so it is always fun to find additional confirmation of the ideas presented here. Alternate form of energy. The machines applying what they have learned about their enemy turn to an alternate and readily available power supply, the bioelectric, thermal, and kinetic energies of the human body. Symbiosis. A new refashioned symbiotic relationship between the two adversaries is born. The machines draw power from the human body, 
an endlessly multiplying and infinitely renewable energy source. Demands for flesh. The UN Security Advisor offers the unconditional surrender of the remaining United Nations. The Machine Ambassador announces to the UN, your flesh is a relic, a mere vessel. Surrender your anima, hand over your flesh, and a wonderful world awaits you. We demand it. Now what is interesting here is that the quoted dialogue on the poster is a little different than the final version we hear in part two of the second renaissance, which could suggest this poster was made before the Animatrix was finished. In the released version, they remove the line that says, surrender your anima, or in other words, surrender your soul. The Matrix. The machines build the Matrix, a computer generated dream world constructed to keep humanity healthy, under control, and oblivious to the truth as they provide an infinite source of power for their new masters. The first one. When the Matrix was first built, there is a man born inside who has the ability to change what he wants, to remake the Matrix as he sees fit. This man frees the first of the rebels. His powers become legendary and are thought to be a match for the machines themselves. Nebuchadnezzar, one of 12 hovercrafts in the rebel fleet. The Nebuchadnezzar is captained by Morpheus and bears a plaque imprinted with the year 2069, the date when the construction of the ship was complete. In the Matrix hovercraft crew video featuring Captain Soren, I already identified and named all 12 of the ships included in the Zion fleet as well as each ship's captain. Wake up Neo. The rebels aboard the Nebuchadnezzar make contact with the individual whom Morpheus believes is the one, prophesied by the Oracle to end the war with the machines and free humanity. His name is Neo. Trinity, a Valkyrie in black leather, observes Neo closely, becoming familiar with his life and his search for answers. Knock Knock. Neo follows the white rabbit tattooed on the shoulder of a woman named Dujour, a decision that leads him to Trinity, a rebel and member of the Nebuchadnezzar crew. The Meeting Neo meets Trinity and learns that the answer to the question that drives him, what is the Matrix, is out there, it's looking for you and it will find you if you want it to. Apprehended The agents, sentient programs who maintain the defense and preservation of the Matrix, apprehend Neo and demand his cooperation in finding Morpheus the most dangerous man alive. The agents had their most feared adversary within their grasp and let him go. Red or blue. In their second meeting, Trinity introduces Neo to Morpheus who poses the life altering question, red or blue. The reference to Alice tumbling down the rabbit hole is made, a concept alluded to on many separate instances in the Matrix mythos. Trinity once assumed the alias Red Queen and used a riddle pulled from Alice in Wonderland to lead a detective to her. Before the events that occur in the Matrix, Detectives hired by agents relentlessly pursued Trinity. One detective, Ash, found her, but realized that he'd been used and vowed to protect her instead. Release and recovery. Neo chooses the red pill, initiating a trace program that pinpoints his real world location. The crew of the Nebuchadnezzar unplug him from the Matrix and bring him aboard. Atrophied muscle regeneration. Having been encapsulated in a gel filled pod for his entire existence, Neo's muscles are atrophied and need to be strengthened through acupuncture-like electrical stimulation. Desert of the Real. Morpheus begins teaching Neo about the Matrix and the real world. The Oracle. Neo is introduced to the Oracle, who confirms Neo's belief that he is not the one. Now I know the Agent Smith is the one crowd is all ready to jump out the window to say, see, the Oracle confirmed Neo isn't the one. But the words here are chosen very carefully. It doesn't say the Oracle confirms Neo isn't the one. It says she confirms Neo's belief that he isn't. There is a difference. When Neo is first introduced to the Oracle, he doesn't yet believe he is the one. It is Neo who says, I'm not the one. And even then, the Oracle does not outright agree with him. She instead replies, sorry kid, you've got the gift, but it looks like you're waiting for something. Your next life maybe, who knows? Well, those of us in the audience who watched the rest of the movie know that Neo does get killed by Agent Smith. And in Neo's next life, or extra life, Neo believes he is the one. For good measure, in The Matrix Reloaded, the Oracle says to Neo, you've made a believer out of me, right after telling Neo where the path of the one ends and specifically saying to him, because you're the one. But I digress. On the Enter the Matrix poster, there is also another artistic note that says, the movie playing on the TV in the Oracle's living room has giant rabbits hopping through city streets. To see more of the movie, check out Night of the Lepus. Heads up, Night of Lepus, also known as Rabbits, is a 70s sci-fi horror movie about an infestation of mutated rabbits based on the 1964 science fiction novel, The Year of the Angry Rabbit. This is a film that gained cult status due to its ridiculously low budget quality. Cypher's Betrayal. Cypher betrays Morpheus and the crew of the Nebuchadnezzar in return for reinstatement into the Matrix. 
Morpheus sacrifices himself to save Neo and is held captive by Agent Smith, who attempts to obtain the codes for Zion's mainframe computer from him. I went into very specific details of Cypher's betrayal in the Cypher Explained video featuring Joe Pantoliano. I'll leave a link in the description for anyone who missed it. Agent Smith classifies humanity. Every mammal instinctively develops a natural equilibrium with the surrounding environment, but you humans do not. You consume every natural resource and then spread to another area. There is only one other organism that follows this pattern, a virus. Guns. Lots of guns. Beginning to believe in his own ability and powers, Neo leads Trinity in an assault on Agent Headquarters where they successfully free Morpheus from Agent Smith. Agent Smith vs. Neo. Neo faces off against Agent Smith and defeats him, only to discover that his adversary has entered another body in the Matrix. Neo dies in the Matrix. Neo is killed by Agent Smith. Agent Smith's defeat. With Trinity's help, Neo is resurrected and unlocks his true power. He can now see the code underpinnings of the Matrix and his control over it transcends those of the agents. Neo destroys Agent Smith. An instance of self-substantiation. Kid, through his belief in Neo and disbelief in the world in which he resides, the Matrix, allows himself to fall to his death, but awakens in the real world. Someone contacted the kid in much the same way that Neo was initially contacted, through his computer. Kid joins Zion. After waking aboard the Nebuchadnezzar, Kid becomes a citizen of Zion. I go into great details about the Kid story and all the other Animatrix episodes mentioned here in the YouTube Animatrix playlist here on this channel. Osiris discovers Machine Army. While fleeing from Sentinels, the hovercraft Osiris reaches the Earth's surface and its crew discovers a massive army of Sentinels and digging machines positioned exactly four kilometers above Zion. Final flight. Thaddeus, captain of the Osiris, orders his crew to fend off marauding sentinels long enough for first mate Jue to reach a drop box inside the Matrix. Delivery. Jue completes her mission, delivering the last transmission from the Osiris in a package bound for the post office. The message warns the rebels of the extensive machine army and its impending attack on Zion. The Osiris and its crew are destroyed by sentinels. Enter the Matrix. The game begins here. And the Enter the Matrix game itself takes place just before and throughout the Matrix Reloaded film. Now in the Matrix Trilogy Timeline Explained video, you can see the different timestamp clues that are found within the different forms of Matrix media and get an idea of when these events could have taken place along the real world timeline. I'll leave a link in the pinned comment for anyone who wants to check out the previous timeline video. If you appreciate this kind of yellow pilled content, be sure to share it on other platforms like Facebook, Reddit, Twitter. You can support the channel by ordering your Matrix University gear at our Teespring shop. And remember, as one realizes that one is a dream figure in another person's dream, that is self-awareness.